Hey guys, so in this lesson today we're going to be talking about steel design and we're going to be breaking this down for civil engineers and for structural engineers. So I'm going to split this lesson into three separate sections. The first is going to be an introduction. I'm going to talk about what is steel design, just very briefly say about how important it is and how much we use it in structural engineering. And then I'm going to show you some free web software for Eurocode uh, 3 steel design. So this is going to be some free software to run some of the most common design checks. So this could be either for your work, if you're a structural engineer, or if you're a student, it can also help you with your assignments and coursework to help you check your answers are correct. And then finally, step three is I'm going to break this down in terms of first principles and talking about uh, the design process, like hand calculations and what steel design is really all about. Uh, in terms of Eurocodes. So I'm going to focus a lot on Eurocodes in this, but a lot of the uh, steel design is also quite universal um, um, and it will be helpful wherever you are. So in terms of what is steel design, so steel design, we use it everywhere in construction. Steel is one of the most commonly used, besides concrete, it's the most commonly used construction material. And it can come in a wide variety of shapes, sections, and strengths uh, and material properties. So here we have a few different steel beams and column sections which can be used, but you can also have these of different varying strengths, different varying finishes, um, all sorts of different steels out there, cold pressed, hot pressed, all of these different varieties. And so in this lesson I'm just going to be focusing on how do we design steel beams and steel columns. So if I come over to this link here, and if you go to www.calcforge.com, I'll put the link in the description of this YouTube video, uh, you can actually find a free steel section designer which can design according to Eurocode 3. So once you've come across to this page, you basically have here on the left a results summary, so it will tell you based on some of the loading conditions that you've put onto this steel, if it's passing or failing, and it's going to tell you your utilization. So utilization is how 100% uh, means that it's on the verge of going from pass to fail, it's 100% utilized, your section is being fully used by all of this force that you're applying to it. And so in this case, it's overutilized, it's 113%, so it's failing. Uh, here on the right, I can actually pick different categories of steel. So I can use universal columns, I can use European sections, American sections, hollow sections. Um, and then basically, we've already preloaded here all of the different section sizes. And for these input loads, so your input bending moment, your input shear, your input axial forces, we're actually calculating that for all of these different section sizes. So you'll see here they're in order. So this is the smallest section size for universal beams, the smallest common, common section size, which is 127. But if I select here 152, you'll see here that this is actually passing. So it's 74% utilized. If I increase again, so this is a bigger section, another bigger, a bigger section than that, you'll see here it's now 51% utilized. So when you use bigger sections of steel, they have more strength and more ability to sort of withstand whatever forces you're applying to it. I can change here the length of the overall steel beam. If you increase the length of the steel, generally you're gonna reduce the utilization. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, increase the utilization. You're gonna, it's gonna be more susceptible to things like buckling or some, some like problems or ways in which it could fail the longer it is. And here you can see the bending moment, shear force and axial force. So bending is how much you're actually bending the beam up and down. Let's say shear force is how much you're sort of applying forces which are perpendicular to the length of the beam. Axial force is either compression or pushing it in or tension. I also have these options here for like advanced menu. So in advanced menu, I can put bending in the other direction on the weak axis. So I can bend it left to right and also put shear force on left to right. And I can change the support conditions at either end of the beam. So this, in this case, it's simply supported on either end, but I can change this to be like fixed, fixed, cantilever for different loading, uh, for different support conditions. 
So I can also edit the strength uh, or the grade of the steel. So 275 is very commonly used, um, but also 355 is used quite commonly now as well, which is higher strength steel, 420 is high strength steel. Um, and then basically I can go through and see the results. So this is where the real sort of value comes in. You can see a breakdown here of how this steel section is performing against these Euroco checks. So you have one which is compression, bending, shear, and then you have these different combined checks. So you have things like bending and shear in combination, bending, shear, and axial. So quite often if you use compression combined with bending you're going to make that whole thing worse because you're sort of bending it and then you're also pushing it like compressing it on either end so the the results of that's generally worse you also have things like lateral torsion buckling which is sort of how if you have a long like cantilever beam let's say and you're squashing it on one end you're going to get it buckling at some point if you imagine you have a ruler and you push it in you're going to get it to sort of like bend as well um so at a certain point you get these lateral torsional buckling effects as well and if i click here full calculation you're going to see a breakdown for this section of all of the euroco checks from euroco 3 so it basically talks you through everything first step is classifying the section so you do some assessment on the different thicknesses of the key section parts of the section to create a classification for it. Class one is like you sort of want it to be class one. It's the most sort of straightforward for the checking. Um, so yeah, class one, uh, but it could be class three if it's like they're very thin in certain locations. Um, and then you, it basically talks you through the different checks. So it does sheer buckling of the web. So it does some checks here, Euroco checks from the clauses, tension, so there's no tension in this case, so it's 0%. There is a little compression, so it does the compression checks on this steel section. Bending, so we do some bending moment checks, um, checking against the resistance of this section, the applied bending forces. We also go through shear and some of these combined checks. And I want to show you also lateral torsion buckling. So lateral torsion buckling is where you have this effect of um, if you don't have restraints and you're sort of compressing it, it will buckle at a certain point. So these are the checks which are performed in order to understand if lateral torsion buckling is a problem on this beam. And so there's a full breakdown of all of the different checks which are done. And it will talk you through this. So all of this calculation is done automatically for you each time you run or you select a different steel section. So I do encourage you to check out this software if you do have a uh, steel design problem. And you can also then download this full report. Everything you see here is a PDF by clicking this full PDF report button. And that's everything I wanted to show you. And now moving on to the theory. Okay, so now let's take a look at the theory behind Eurocode steel design. So um, as we were looking at in the previous example, you could see various different checks that need to be done to follow the Eurocode regulations. So this can include bending, shear, combined bending and shear, also serviceability and that lateral torsion buckling. But the one I'm going to focus on just for this theory session is talking about bending. And if you find this useful, I can also produce some videos on the other uh, checks as well. But basically, I'm going to just explain about how to follow the bending theory requirements. So in Eurico 3, there are basically some sections in that document, so 5.5 and 6.2, which cover how you need to do these checks for bending. So there are two, there are basically two key checks that need to be done. One is on the cross section classification. So you need to check the steel beam or the steel column section is actually what, which category it fits into. And then using that category, you can basically use that to check its resistance to bending and the other checks as well. But the key part is to first decide what classification is the steel that you're trying to design. So once you've actually decided on the classification, the, bend, the actual check itself isn't very complicated. You're taking the design moment, so this is the force that you're applying, the, um, and calculating that as a bending moment, um, and then uh, dividing that by the resistance, which we are about to show you how to calculate. 
uh, and this depends on the section classification. And then you're making sure that this is under one. So you're making sure that this is under 100% utilization. But how do we decide the classification? So what we need to do is we need to take some measurements across the steel beam section and we need to check and do some comparisons between the various thicknesses of these different sections. So what we need to do here is we need to take measurements on the flange, the web, and uh, yeah, basically it depends on if it's uh, the web's in bending or the web's in compression, what sort of checks we need to do here. You see here there on the right, this is Eurocode 3, and then this is actually British standard. And so um, if we have this like flange section, which is under um, this dimension, then we can actually classify it as a say, class one uh, plastic beam or column. However, if we don't meet these limits, we actually need to then move on to check if it's a class two. So ideally we want it to be class one because it's sort of the most simple or the most uh, straightforward, but sometimes it's not, always, it's not always the case that you can just design everything as class one. Maybe you have like cost requirements or you have some other constraint, which means it's not possible. So you may have to consider it being working with a class two section. Uh, and then you have these limits which are slightly higher. So now this, this has become 10 and 83. So we then run checks on this. But if it's not class two, we go to class three. And again, you see the limits get pushed higher. And finally, class four, which is a slender beam, which is um, yeah, more challenging, let's say, to design with. Here's a summary, basically, of the different classifications and uh, the checks that need to be done. So once you've, the first step is classify the beam. Once you've done this classification, you're then able to you, uh, calculate your moment capacity. You'll see, so you'll see here on the right how the checks actually change depending on which type of section you have. So in this case, you can use the plastic section modulus and then others you have to use a sort of re reduced uh, section modulus. So one for elastic beams or this other effective um, uh, section modulus and yeah the section modulus we use it in the calculation for actually uh, checking the bending and other um, resistances as well so here where you can see we're calculating our bending resistance so it's yeah it's important we have a good section modulus if we want to design um, strong beams and so class one and two are the most sort of optimized for that but it doesn't mean to say we can't use three and four it's just that three and four mean that you're sort of like it's not as um, optimized as it could be uh, and yeah so we can calculate our section modules about different axes as well so you need to consider is the bending happening on the uh, Y, Y axis or the Z axis um, and to calculate that accordingly. So it's not necessarily always bending on this strong axis. And so our design steps, if we want to, just to recap, our design steps for bending for Eurocodes is, let's first get our strength, so our FY, which is the yield strength of the steel. We then get this sigma from table 5.2, so this is like a calculated sort of empirical number from this table. And then we need to substitute this into our, um, into our calculations to find our classification for both the flange and the web. So we look at both of them. They both have to be within the limit. Uh, we take the least favorable class, as I was just saying, to get our overall section class from the flange and the web. And then we use this to calculate our um, section modulus and eventually our resistance and then we do our check so that's all the steps we need to do in order to do our bending check but as we saw in the uh, calculation that we were just looking at so for the steel design so I'll just come back to this just to refresh so on the steel section designer on calcforge.com you'll see here you have many different other checks that need to be done so start with se section classification Bending is down here, but we also have many other checks that need doing. So if you're interested to see some more theory on some of these other uh, checks that have been done, please do comment below and I'll create some more videos. Thank you for listening.